Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be the patch 7.24 notes rundown. I understand that I'm a few days late. Uh, first day was pretty much unexcusable, but then for the past two days I was pretty sick uh, in the hospital with a pretty nasty virus, and I'm just starting to get over it, but I'm still sick uh, even while I'm making this video, so we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, fortunately, these notes uh, that are we're, we're going to be looking at um, also has the update to Morgana, so we'll, we'll come back to this when we get to Morgana. Um, but otherwise, let's just move straight into it. Um, so Aurelian Soul, our cooldown reduced. So Voice of Light, 120 to 80 scale, or from 120 to 80 to 110 to 70. This doesn't do anything to him. Um, this type of a, a buff isn't what's. I don't, I don't know. Like they write that this patch is buff to Phase Rush on Range Champion will help revitalize the Star Forger, but he's far enough below par to deserve a little extra. This isn't a little extra. This is virtually negligible. Um, he's not an ultimate that you play around, and what I mean by that is uh, there are definitely champions that you play around their ultimates. Twisted Fate is one of them, uh, another one is Malzahar. Uh, Malzahar, Twisted Fate are the two primary ones that come to mind when you think of like playmaking and you know maybe making to look something happen. Jin, I guess in some cases, is another person that you're going to look to make stuff happen. Um, whenever you have that ultimate up, Shen, uh, another ultimate that you know you want to make to look stuff happen when he's up. Uh, Karthus potentially another champion. So cooldowns that are on champions like those are relatively big uh, and they're high impact and competitive. Aurelian Soul, uh, not that type of champion. So um, I don't think that this is really that big. But we'll get to whatever they're talking about with the phase rush uh, later on. Bard, base health region, and meat damage increased. Uh, this is kind of interesting because I think that with the way that uh, the support meta is shaping up right now in the bottom lane, at least on Korea, um, I feel like Bard is in an interesting spot where people aren't giving him as much attention as he could potentially uh, deserve. Um, so it, it's nice to see him get some buffs here. 5.4 per 5 to 7.5 uh, per 5 is... I mean, that's quite noticeable uh, for sustain. Passive Traveler's Call, meet base damage is up by 10. I mean, that, that's also going to be noticeable in lane uh, lanes where you're going to pick him. Also, with the resurgence of Jin, uh, it sounds pretty stupid, but Bard is one of the, the go-to support answers for Jin because you can just uh, use his ultimate to stop Jin inside a curtain call. But I don't think that we're going to get back in a state where, you know, Jin is uh, going to be 100% heavy priority, even though he is quite big right now um, in bottom lane as one of the primary ADCs. Uh, it's always important to sometimes talk about some of the indirect uh, things that can cause champions to have a resurgence, and in that regard, Bard obviously comes up there, but we'll see what ends up happening up to Bard uh, in the next few patches or something, but yeah. Camille, uh, passive shield duration increased and Q recast window increased, so these are pretty nice buffs for her. Uh, there's been a lot of people complaining that Camille isn't the powerhouse that she used to be, and that just other tank champions are doing significantly better than her. I have disagreed, I just think that we haven't had enough competitive uh, gameplay uh, to really showcase that Camille is still going to be a viable pick in a lot of situations and team compositions. Shield duration going up by 33% uh, is pretty noticeable. I think the 2 seconds is something that she can really make usage of, uh, especially in the mid and late game, so I think that she's really really going to like that. Uh, the Q Precision Protocol, uh, window to recast is up you know, by 0.5 seconds, delay for empowered attack still 1.5 seconds, I mean that that's fine. Um, I think that the only really, really big change here is this, uh, because she can definitely make more use of it now, and there's not as much uh, outplay potential by the opponent, uh, because she can just sort of sit on it while she bashes your face in. Um, so I, I think that's okay. Um, I, I don't think this is the total amount of love that she would obviously like in order to come back to being the uh, super S tier level top laner, but she'll take what she can get. Darius, passive D da uh, bleed damage and bonus AD at max stacks increased. So the thing here is that Darius is still really not doing what he needs to do. Um, I remember, and you know, I wasn't the only one that talked about this. I remember Freak talked about it on broadcast that Darius should maybe, in theory, should have he could he should have been able to come back um, with how the meta was shaping up. But the problem is, is that he's still so clunky, and he's not a, a champion that can really make use of teleport. And I know on Korea, uh, all the challenger, master tier, Dariuses at one point, um, one of which who I had even personally gotten to spo uh, speak, did I personally speak to, came to the conclusion that you could not run teleport on Darius, you had to run Ghost. And so now, I know what some people are probably thinking, well, oh, why don't you just run Spellbook and swap it out then? No. <laughs> His teleports are terrible. 
They're, they're absolutely disgusting. He has a unique laning phase because you have to play around the fact that he's running Ghost instead of Teleport, so the recall timers, the bounces, and the way that he manipulates the wave is a little bit different as well. Needs the Ghost in order to be a useful team fighter in later stages of the game and sort of becomes a summoner spell that you have to play around when he has it available and when the opponent is lacking teleport and you have to really make use of slow pushes in the long side waves uh, or you know on the side lanes in order to uh, fit him into a fight without it being too overly aggressive. But then on top of that, he is also in a, a state where you need other champions inside of the team compositions. He's not going to be a versus all champion. He is going to be something that you pick him as a counter, but then in addition to picking him as a counter, your team composition needs to be properly set up in order to support him um, without just having other champions ultimately just be a better pick. Um, so I, I think until those types of problems for him uh, can get fixed somehow, um, he's basically going to be like this potentially really good solo QE pub stomp champion at lower MMRs. Uh, I think that Darius's that run Teleport and NA and EU are being moronic. Um, they should probably try out running Ghost. Uh, I think in the solo queue setting, the Ghost Darius, uh, Flash Ghost, by the way, I'm not saying Ghost Teleport. Um, I think that, you know, he has success there. But it's, it's really weird to talk about a champion uh, and his balance problems when he is fit into a lane that primarily only runs teleport and then he doesn't run it because then it becomes even more complex to balance, um, primarily just because of that other uh, aggressive summoner. Okay, Evelyn. Uh, W's magic resist shred now applies to the attacker ability that procs it. Okay, passive demon shade, bug fix, bug fix. So these are just bug fixes. Um, she also had her up recommended items updated. That's fine. Ezreal, Q ratio decreased. Um, I don't think that the attack damage ratio on his Q is what was causing Ezreal to be so problematic. Um, it's obviously going to help try to keep him in line, but Ezreal is still primarily pick or ban uh, right now on Korea anyway. I don't know how it is in NA and EU. Then again, historically, they could never really pilot the champion, so I don't know. Um, with that being said, though, I think that it's a little bit too extreme of a nerf because I think that really his strength lies inside of the kleptomancy thing right now because it allows him to be really, really obnoxious. He's one of the few champions that remain in bottom lane that has the ramp, uh, or the requirement to ramp. And when you have Kleptomancy further fueling the ramp and allowing the ramp to sustain itself, then that's where it becomes problematic. Um, I think that, you know, his ability to proc it with his Q, you know, how easily he can access it inside of that role, that's where really the, I think the power from Ezreal is being generated. I think that removing his ability, well, he wasn't even really being picked Ezreal jungle anymore uh, ever since the removal of Storm Raiders, but then we're gonna get to phase rush and see what's going on there. Um, but I think that this nerf is too extreme. I think that his balance issues uh, lie in other areas that is most notably the Kleptomancy thing. So I think that if something ends up happening to Kleptomancy, then Ezreal just gets shot in the foot. I think if nothing ends up happening to Kleptomancy and Ezreal receives other nerfs down the line because of that, uh, you know, the rune or whatever, then if something does happen to Kleptomancy, you know, way further in the future, then Ezreal just gets forgotten about. And I don't like balanced stuff like that, so I don't know. I think, this, I think this is too extreme and I think that there's other ways that they should have looked at him. Or, honestly, I, he is like the primary candidate of that, uh, that rune, so... Maybe even tweaking the rune itself simply because of him uh, would be okay. I don't know. But, alright. Galio, W now deals damage to champions. Passive ratio decreased, equal down decreased. So this is really, this is really strange. Galio has all but basically disappeared, um, at least in Korean solo queue. Um, and I, I think that it's just because, you know, the meta uh, phasing out right now. Um, you know, he phased out of the meta. A lot of stuff is going on inside of it. I think Galio will eventually refine his place. He's also a champion that I think is mostly only suited for competitive. When you do pick him, uh, you're mostly picking him in a competitive environment so that he can make the use out of his out, uh, out of his ultimate, out of his engages with his taunt, uh, and really just being coordinated with your teams. Um, so then outside of that, the only other place that you're gonna find that is gonna be very high MMR. So Passive Colossal Smash, 0.7 ability power to 0.5, that's completely fine. Now, the Shield of Duran uh, change is really weird. Now deals uh, 20 to 60 plus 0.2 ability power to 60 to 180 plus 0.6 ability power damage to taunted champions based on charge time. <laughs> they gave him a lot of damage out of nowhere. Like, yeah, I understand that the Passive Colossal Smash is, you know, it's lowered. 
But if you get a full charged Shield of Durand, that just feels really weird. That feels like that's going to be really, really impactful for Tank Galio. He's getting some of the damage back uh, that he lost elsewhere, just inside of this buff. Doesn't even matter about the ability power stuff. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. E-Justice Punch, 14 to 10 seconds, uh, 12 to 8 seconds. That's really big as well. So th these are actually more so centered at uh, Tank Galio, I think, than it is AP Galio. Um, this helps him make up for the damage loss that he had in the past. Also, I think that the Aftershock thing is just totally underutilized on him. And obviously this has even enhanced synergy uh, with it because you just get a lot of value out of his shield. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think that's fantastic. So it's really good. Um, hope to see him back actually soon. I, I, I like champions like Elio, even though I think he's really obnoxious. Ivern, Grove Health, Cross, yeah, this is definitely what Ivern needs. <laughs> what a joke. Jarvan, uh, four. Passive and uh, Q damage decreased. Passive, uh, Martial Cadence. So 10% to 8% of the current's tur uh, target's current health. That's pretty noticeable. Q Dragon Strike uh, loses 20 damage at max rank. That's noticeable as well. Um, this really helps, uh, you know, play around Jarvan, mostly in the mid and late game. Uh, that's where you're going to notice these nerfs the most. I think that Jarvan in the early game, though, in the early to mid transition, is relatively still going to be the same champion. I expect to see him still in competitive. I think he's still one of the best stronglers in the game right now. Um, and I also do think that, you know, uh, in competitive or at higher MMR, he's still definitely capable of being flexed in, uh, by top lane. So I think that, uh, you know, that's fine. Karthus, our ratio increased our Requiem 0 0.6 ability power to 0 0.75. It's not enough. Uh, I mean, the, the loss of Deathfire is really, really big. Aerie can feel okay uh, in the earlier stages, but then, you know, the longer that the game goes on, the fact that his AoE ultimate has lost Deathfire, but also just the way that his, uh, what is it? His E, what is that called? It's not Lay Waste. Lay Waste is Q. What is E? Defiled Ground or something? I don't even know. I don't know what Aziz is called. But anyways, the, the loss of Deathfire there just feels really bad. Car Karthus is in like a really weird state, and I understand that it's, it's really, really difficult to balance, so it's not surprising that they're just taking it easy. I don't know if he's a champion that Riot even really ever wants to be competitive. Like, there have been times where Karthus has come out, but the thing is, is that if you, if you tune Karthus too hard, his kit and how oppressive he can be is just too strong. And if players commit a lot of time to learning him, he creates this very unfun game. Um, and if Karthus gets ahead, it's a nightmare. And if he's behind, he's still useful. And so if you buff him and then he's behind, it it's almost like he's not behind in like the current state that he's in. So I, I can understand the balance changes being a, a little bit slow. I think that if they're really looking to buff him or do something to him, it's probably going to lie inside of his W or his passive. I think that are not as passive. Um, it's gonna, yeah, it's it's gonna be inside of his W somewhere, or like adding a passive to an ability that changes up some of the stuff that he does. Okay, Leona, W damage decreased. I mean, this is pretty fair. Um, so she's losing twenty damage at rank one. Never mind, I take that back. She's losing twenty damage at every rank. That's a little bit excessive. I think that I think that's that's really excessive. I could understand like 10 20 is that's gross. That's really really gross. That's really gross. That definitely hurts a lot of her kill lanes. I don't I I I don't know if that's too excessive. I don't think that Leona's as oppressive as people are making her out to be. I I I mean I think she's kind of okay. I don't know. Okay. She's still fine. Yeah, but I I think that that's excessive. But okay. Malzahar, our damage decreased. Malzahar should need to press more buttons to kill people. Well, so this is where I feel like Riot uh, is doing, again, it's like one of those nerfs that, you know, happened to Ezreal above, but they do this to champions all the time. So, like, why now? Why, why randomly in patch 7.24 are we deciding that Malzahar should need more buttons to press, you know, kill people? What about when Malzahar was last nerfed? What about when we changed its voidlings like three or four times in a season? What about when, you know, we, we reworked him and like, why now? 
Why is he losing 0.3 ability power now? Why is he losing 50 flat damage at rank 3 now? Like, what Rioter lost in a silver game promo match to a Malzahar who pressed R and killed him? Like, what fucking is causing this to come out as, as a nerf this late into Season 7? Like, we're about to be in Season 8. Malzahar has occasionally, like, you know, he's, he's come in and out of the meta. He's a very, like, roller coastery champion. Um, where he fits in in very certain metas. At one point, he was primarily a support, um, and then he, you know, he came back into the meta as as a mid laner that didn't slow down. He was even a flex uh, at certain points. He even got picked up in top lane um, at certain points as well. This nerf just seems way too excessive. Like his R, like hold on, let's just be honest. His R does not kill you. Just by pressing R. He, he presses E, W, and then R, and as long as he has the Voidlings out and you're a squishy, you die. If Syndra hits you with a Q, an E, and an R, you're dying if you're an ADC. That's just how that sort of is. I mean, what Rioter didn't decide that Syndra needed more than one button to kill people? I, I don't even fucking understand, like, where these nerfs come from. Not only does he lock himself out of abilities, and he has a self-lockdown while casting the ultimate, yeah, I get that it's a lot of damage, but it's not a ridiculous amount of damage until he has four or five, six items. And if you're a squishy, you deserve to die if you're in range uh, of Malzahar and you didn't buy a QSS or magic resistance. Absolutely, you deserve to die. I think that the ability power ratio nerf is... Like, that's ridiculous. I think the... I, like, I don't know, man. The fact that they did both, the, the 50 flat plus the AP, that's just really gross. This, this really feels like they had, like, a vendetta here. Someone lost to Malzahar, and they were really mad. And I I, I mean, he's still going to be fine. Uh, the R utility is, you know, all that you really need it for at the pro level. Um, or, like, high MMR. Like, the loss of the damage, it's not going to gut him. Um, but it, you'll definitely feel it in some spots. Uh, he'll still overkill certain champions depending on how far ahead he is on them. Um, and, you know, it, it'll be okay, but it's just really gross. I, I hate seeing changes like this so much. And it's just, like, so out of left field. Like, how can you, how can you take such a, you know, like, uh, how can you be so cautious with some buffs and nerfs to some champions and then you do something this extreme to him? It's just really strange. Now, the reason that it's not like the end of the world, though, is this. So his rank 1 base is untouched, and his rank 2 base is negligible. Um, I mean, the, the rank 3, though. The, like the, so the transition between rank 2 to rank 3, while factoring in the ability power, that's where you really feel it. So, I don't know. Q damage decreased. Um, this will be noticeable if he procs it a few times during laning phase. So, I mean, I guess it's a, it's a pretty okay nerf, but I mean, Maokai's back primarily in only top lane, so he is making use of the Bramble Smash a little bit more up there. Nah, that's completely fine. This nerf is all right. Morgana, base me. Uh, oh, yeah, let's get let's go back up to... Actually, let's just finish more. Let's finish the other champions, and we'll go up to Morgana. Orn, W damage uh, reduced, cooldown increased. So Bellow's Breath, 12 to 20%, targets maximum health to 10 to 18%, uh, targets maximum health. This is this is fair. Uh, cooldown, 12 to 8 seconds to 13 to 9. These, these are both pretty fair buffs. I, I don't think that it, um, it helps, though, with what's making him oppressive. So I was one of the advocates of Orn needed to be buffed. I, I initially said his R needed to not lock him out as long as it did. They, they changed that. I also said that, you know, his W needed to be changed to deal more damage, and then they gave him max health, because it used to be current. I'm like, holy shit, okay, well, they're they're really going ham on Orn. And then they randomly gave him damage on his E. They randomly gave him damage on his Q, and it's like, what are you guys doing? Like, you you can't give him all of these buffs at, like, the same... Like, that, that was... The way that they approached buffing Orn, I think, was... It also falls in line with it's too excessive. And then the unwillingness to, you know, dial back on some of those things and instead just jump to this is, is really bizarre in itself. Um, the Sunfire Cape buffs, I think, are fine for him. He already built Sunfire Cape uh, in some matchups and stuff, whatever they're talking about here. Um, but I, I, I still don't think that this really is the problem. The problem is that I think the shield. I think the shield that he gets from his Bellows Breath is, is the real cause for concern, not the damage itself or the, the follow-up proccing of the Brittle. I think it's r mostly the shield. Um, 
I don't like the damage that they added to his Q and Z. I don't like the fact that he has hybrid damage uh, in lane when they gave him so much damage ramp uh, inside of buffs in the last few patches. I think they should probably change his Q to magic um, if they're going to do that. I don't know. I think that they should address his shield, not like this stuff. But whatever, a nerf is greatly appreciated. Um, I still think that he's going to be primarily be picker ban uh, in solo queue still, and he'll still be C play and competitive. Okay, Riven Q damage uh, increased. So realistically, she's not always hitting all three broken wings. So it's basically ten base um, most of the time, and then she gets uh, zero point ten total attack damage. So she can get anywhere from like forty to fifty damage late game, I guess, on it uh, total. So I mean, I guess that's not. The end of the well, I mean, it, it can get pretty big late game, um, but it doesn't matter, it still doesn't address the problems that Riven has as a champion, uh, in the early, mid, and late game against coordinated players. And so, you can give her all the damage that you want to, but it's not going to make her come back into competitive, so it's completely fine. Buff, uh, Riven mains actually should, in theory, need it, um, because their champion is just like to, to, to win lane with Riven, um, without jungler aid or to actually do stuff in mid and late game. Um, usually does require quite a bit of skill, so people can bitch piss and moan about her all the time, but I mean, I, the buff the buff here is fair. Uh, Shen, Q damage bonus decreased, uh, Twilight Assault, um, 15 to 40 scaling to 5 to 30? What? You took off 10? So he's losing like 30 damage. That is, that's so gross early. That's really gross. I mean, it's fine. It's not why you pick Shen, but like some, some of these nerfs are just so out there. It's just so out there. Oh God. So now Q cost increased, Q aura's flat damage bonus decreased ratio. So there was a lot of hype around Sona at the very beginning um, when Klepto and all that good stuff came out, but then I actually just saw her going down again in Korean solo queue, and I think it had to do um, with the popping up of, you know, Thresh and uh, Leona and stuff, and they were just really putting her in place. Um, and then I, I just stopped seeing Sona altogether. So the nerfs are a little bit weird. Maybe she's still really popular in NA and EU, um, but honestly, I don't, I don't recall the last time I saw Sona in the game in like the last two weeks. So I don't know, I don't know where this nerf comes from. Um, but whatever. I mean, this this is a champion that has like what twenty something or thirty percent win ratio in competitive. Uh, she's so hard to make work, um, and she's a champion that you have to be so careful with when approaching uh, nerfs and buffs and stuff with her. Just primarily due to how she operates and then uh, the way that she interacts with some of the runes right now, especially. So it's okay. Uh, yeah, Tarek base armor decreased forty five to forty. I think that's completely fair. Xin Zhao, base health decreased, W second hit ratio decreased. Korea still has yet to pick him up, by the way. I know that I did the video with Wiggly a while ago. They are still not picking him up. So either something is just completely going over their heads or the champion is just terrible. Um, and I don't really know because I personally have been on the receiving end of, you know, approaching him and being like, oh, okay, he's going to die here. And then he doesn't die. So I, I don't really know. Base health is down by 30. Okay. Second Lightning, uh, 0 0.85 to 0 0.75 total attack damage. I mean, that's going to be uh, quite noticeable, actually, in his early game ganks and trades. So, I don't know. But I still have yet to see him in Korea. Yorick, base attack damage decrease. That is the st Like, come the fuck on. What a, what a joke of a fucking nerf. This champion needs fucking help, not nerfs. Mother of God. Demonetized, by the way. But anyways, what, what a joke. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Can you please buff him? There's a reason no one fucking wins with him. God damn. No one picks him. No one wins with him. Like, such a bad champion. Zoe, W spell? Okay, now this this is... Now, speaking of an overtuned abomination, that's her, and I love it, by the way. I love every second of it. W spell pickups last less uh, less long. 
E now travels less far, slows less, but lasts longer. Okay. Q paddle star. Uh, now begins Q cast complete. Not when it begins. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. That's pretty big. Fix the bug. Okay. Uh, without paddle. Fix the bug. Fix the bug. Okay. That's not long enough. That, that that honestly should probably have to be a little bit shorter. I think it should be probably like 15. 20, 20 still makes it so that if you're trying to make usage of teleport, you still can. Um, and I think that's where the, where the real problem lies. Um, 40 seconds is basically for anything that's not teleport. 20 seconds I still think is too much for teleport. They should maybe have them be on different cooldowns. Like, have the summoners that can be picked up be on different cooldowns. I think that would be uh, a better approach to it. Sleepy Trouble Bubble, refund on champion hit. Okay. Uh, drowsy duration, two seconds to two. <laughs> Wait, what? They increased? Wait, wait, it's a nerf? You call this a nerf? This is their idea of a nerf. This is really what's causing Zoe to be problematic. The fact that now she'll have to cast or use her spell 20 seconds earlier. This is big. This is big. This is a joke. Th this is a joke. Th this is a joke. Rather than change the hitbox, rather than change the projectile speed, they, they change the max travel distance after passing over a wall by 150 range. And then they increase the drowsy duration by 0.2 seconds. And then refund on champion hit instead of refund on hit. Because that was, that was game breaking in mid lane. She already has fucking, you know, the entire Great Lakes of Mana anyway. This is, this is, a, this is a, definitely a nerf, yeah. This is really going to kick her out of uh, her lane kingdom that she has going on right now. I read W wrong? What did I read W wrong? 40 seconds to 20 seconds. Yeah, I know the sleep wasn't affected. What, what my problem is, is that these are ridiculous nerfs. These aren't real nerfs. Oh, duration of spell pick. Oh, you have 20 seconds to pick up the spell? The fuck does that even matter? That's even worse! What? <laughs> that doesn't do anything! What are these for balance changes? Oh, this is, this is hilarious. I, I didn't think it could get... Okay, so, alright, here we go. I'm a little excited about this. So some people in my Twitch chat were telling me that Zyra mid was back. So let's take a peek as to maybe why. Mono region 8.5 per 5. Yeah, sure. Let's just give her, you know, three more. Yeah, okay. Cool. Mono region growth stat 0 0.8. Okay, okay. 0 0.8 to 0 0.4. Okay. Uh, passive Garden of Thorns 1300 to 900. Max seeds. For, okay. So that got nerfed. Plant duration 5 to 7.5 scaling to 8 seconds at all levels. Passive seed duration, 45 seconds to 30 seconds. W seed unchanged at 60 seconds. Plant health, 4 to 6 based on W rank to 8. Wait, 
Okay. Okay. W rampant growth no longer grants Zyra's plants 10 50% maximum health. When Zyra kills an enemy, rampant growth's recharge time is reduced by 20%. 100. What? E grasping roots sixty to two hundred to sixty to two forty. What? Does anyone remember that she was an AP uh, carry support? Does anyone does anyone remember those times when the Leandri's, uh, you know, eye watcher Zyra would kill the AD carry? Does anyone remember that? Why are we giving her more damage? What? Yeah, you clear a wave and you get two W's. This is ridiculous. Okay. Bramble vest, bramble. Okay, so I actually talked about this uh, earlier on. I think this is a buff. So, reflect damage now has lower base damage upscales with armor. I think this is a buff. The only time it's not a buff is when you would go bramble vest first. But what it lets you do is it lets you sit on Bramble Vest longer. So you don't have to upgrade it into Thornmail without like having a feels bad men moment. I think this is this is a buff. So I think this is really, really, really good, to be completely honest. I think it's really good. Because you can easily sit on this way longer than you normally could before. So I think that's all cool. Sunfire Cape. Aura damage increased. The two items that have enabled consistent laning patterns for tanks this season have been Sunfire Cape and Bramble Vest. We're not really happy with the play patterns that arise from either being the go-to item on tanks. Sunfire Cape tends to lead to overly high base damage on tanks with little cost and overall durability, while Bramble Vest makes uh, basic attacking champions in top lane. Okay, however... Okay. Aura damage is 11 plus 1 level, 25 plus, okay, that's nice. Bonus damage to minions is reduced, okay. These changes apply to Forge Cape, okay. That's nice. Runes, oh, runes! Oh, I didn't expect this. Lethal Tempo, uh, cooldown 10 seconds to 6 seconds, okay, that's really nice. Fleet Footwork 5 to 50 to 3 to 60, attack damage heal ratio 10% to 30% bonus attack damage. Ability power heal ratio, 20 to 40%, okay? Critical uh, levels of the attack that activates Fleet of Foot is a critical hit. Fleet Footwork healing is increased by 40% of your critical damage modifier. Ooh, that's really nice. Okay. Uh, overheal, 30% of healing to 40% of healing. Triumph, 15% missing health to 12% missing health. That's that's definitely noticeable. Presence of mind, five seconds. To, wait, what? Okay, Kassadin likes that even more. Coupe de Gras, 10 to 9%. Don't like that. Uh, eyeballs per assist, 2 to 1. And then, okay, tooltip. Sorcery phase rush. Melee phase rush users are the most universally out uh, are almost universally outperforming their ranged compatriots, so we're giving range users the slow resistance as well. And also grants uh, to ranged champions. Oh, okay. Excellent. Celerity, four that's a joke. Okay, mirror shell, 5 to 6. Okay, vitality. Overgrowth. Uh, the plus HP tax now, but okay. Oh, okay, that's nice. Now also boost shields and heals on the user. That's nice. Okay, Keystone Kleptomancy. You're too far away. No longer increases attack range by 25. Okay. Update. So many uh, table mechanism updates to decrease. Okay. Rune interface, bounty, hunter, runes, each all okay. Ability, icon updates, none of this stuff matters. Oh, I hate the champion health bars. I, I really, really hate the champion health bars so much. I hate it so, 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 so much. All right, let's take a look at the skins. Uh, that's ugly. Santa Draven, that's ugly. Okay, this is cute. This is cute. Okay, this is a skin that you need to buy. Is there any Easter eggs in this? Let's take a look. Looks like she fucking stole a Moomoo. I think what this is trying to tell us, by the way, can you see this? Yeah, you can. 
That's, I think that's like a moo, and I think that Poppy, Poppy's into human trafficking. Okay, well this is some fucked up shit. Poppy is into human trafficking. Uh, Poppy has a moo in the, in the bag. And the, the Poros, they're in on it. This is, this is some really messed up stuff. A moo a moo is getting trafficked right now. This is, is <laughs> I don't think that's okay. Someone needs to tell Riot this isn't okay. Is there any Easter eggs in Draven's thing? Let's see. No. Oh, wait. No. All right, so Poppy is trafficking a Moomoo. Okay. All right, we're going to do Morgana. All right. Health growth stat 98 to 90. That's really big. Wow. Okay, so she's, lo she's losing like a Ruby Crystal. Still definitely not spellbound. Damage to heal conversion ratio adjusted from 15 to 40% at levels 1 through 16 to 20% at all levels. That's really, really big. Uh, w tormented so uh, soil cooldown increased from 10 uh, to 12. That's really big as well. Um, let's just uh, control F Morgana and go over her. Base mono region in, uh, increased, W mono region and growth decreased. Passive no longer procs on small units, but heals more off everything else. W cooldown reduced uh, when passive proc. So I, I've played with this once already. Um, I haven't, I mean, I've, I've been really sick the last few days, so I haven't gotten to see more of her. She's not popping up in Korea yet. No picks, no bans. So I don't know what to say there. I also think that the jungle Morgana thing is a complete joke and doesn't have any merit. Um, passive Siphon Soul no longer grants. Uh, yeah, we already touched, touched on that. Morgana heals for, anyway, we touched on that. Tormented Soil cooldown is now reduced by 5% whenever passive Siphon Soul triggers. So, I mean, the, the thing about this is, it's really weird. Um, Morgana is an interesting thing because she's, she's a very ridiculous champion in mid lane in the sense that you don't have to be a better player than your opponent in order to win the lane. Um, there is still noticeable differences in good Morganas versus bad Morganas, um, but I don't really know how to feel about her. Um, she is occasionally picked in the support role. This will probably definitely enable her uh, to be flexed more often, but I'm not convinced that it, it's going to make her uh, pop all the way back up. Uh, she might, I mean, she might be propelled to like an A tier uh, mid laner with this uh, because the, the W change definitely is noticeable. Um, the other changes are also noticeable as well. I just think that you know other mid laners are going to offer more in very specific spots. And I think that Morgana is uh, another champion that also relies somewhat on the meta to be favoring her if she's going to be picked. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's it for patch 7.24. Is the next patch 8 or does it go to 7.25? I don't actually know. Um, but for the most part, the things that interest me the most from this patch are the Galio changes, um, Galio changes, and the... whatchamacallit? Uh, the Zyra changes. Those are the only two, like, really, really cool things. Everything, a lot of things in this patch actually make me angry. Um, and I, I think that, not angry, like, legitimately, but, like, it's just really, really sad to see how some of the stuff is approached. And it really makes you wonder, like, from where, uh, are these thought processes or these conclusions being reached. But that's pretty much it. So, that's it. We'll see if uh, next patch has more in store.